Thank you, Hans. Hello, dear guest. My name is Fritz Goederebuur and I work in the R&D department. I've been engineering enzymes ever since I started back in 1988. And do you know that I use enzymes every day, day in and day out? And are you all aware that you all use enzymes every day, day in and day out? And so today I want to share with you a, I would say, typical day in my life when I share enzymes. And that starts by waking up, opening the curtains, and looking at the lovely Dutch weather every day. And then it's time to have breakfast, the most important meal of the day. And for me, breakfast consists of bread. I really like my bread, crusty on the outside and soft on the inside. What I don't like, if I have a baguette like this and it is as hard as a rock. Can we do something about this tailing process? Yes, we can. We can add enzymes. By the end. So bread contains starch. And one of the mechanisms of staling is the retrogradation of starch. So mimic this Heiberman sphere toy. Maybe you played this with a kid when you were a kid, or with your kid, or maybe even with your grandkid. But imagine that this is a starch. Um, starch, in the presence of water and heating, starts to swell. And at the end, it starts to gelatinize. So then it will have a fluffy structure at the end. But over time, it can go back and go back in its original state by recrystallization, and you have your bread as hard as a rock. That's something which we don't want. So what is happening during the baking process? So as I mentioned, the swelling has started and the enzymes are doing their job. So in this specific starch structure, uh, enzymes, they cut on specific places. And that means that there is not the same structure anymore. And that means it's much more difficult, you know, that it goes back in the original state. And that with that, this bread, the bread stays fresher and longer. Enzymes during breakfast are not only in the bread, but also many other types of food, like milk or lactose-free milk, uh, cheese, cereals, biscuits, sweets, and so on and so on. So how nice it is if you start to have your breakfast in the morning with a slice of bread, some scrambled eggs, or some chocolate paste on that. That's nice, tasteful, but also it gives some stains which are, can be hard to remove. It can either be re removed from the, from the dishes itself, but also, of course, having a chocolate paste on your, on your shirt. So it has to go into the laundry. So it's time for me to go to work. I have my breakfast, time for me to go to work, but first I need to put the dishes in the dishwasher. So I did the, everything in the dishwasher, put in the template, put on the echo system, and then throw it uh, back, and then it starts. And when I come back, it uh, all will be clean. So, what do you know about the dishwasher besides the fact that your significant other always loads it the wrong way? Let's take you inside the dishwasher. So there are two key elements in the dishwasher. It's the rotating pump and the splashing and the, and the mechanical force of the hot water to your dishes. That cleans it. That cleans it. But there's a third key element there, of course, and those are the detergents and, of course, the enzymes in the detergents. So over time, the new development of new dishwashers, of new detergents and, of course, new enzymes enabled that we, did the, the, that we did the dishes, let's say, 15 years ago at 65 degrees Celsius. So nowadays, we can do that at 50 degrees Celsius. So saving energy and also reducing the CO2 emission. So the next step in this, uh, in this whole process is uh, that the cleaning of the, of the enzymes of, on the stains can be very specific. Imagine, uh, the cleaning of the enzyme as a Pac-Man. And the Pac-Man has a mouth which has, a, which has a, the shape of a cone. So the ice cream can fit into that into the Pac-Man and then uh, it gets uh, cleaned, right? But what about more difficult stains? 
difficult stains which are stubborn and, and burned on, like macaroni cheese or creme brulee. That's more difficult. So we have to find enzymes uh, with respect to that, and that it fits in the, in the new, uh, that, the, that the stain fits in the, in the enzyme. So if you have a square and a circle, it doesn't fit. Does something, but doesn't fit. So we have to engineer, engineer that enzyme in such a way that the circle fits exactly in that mouth of the, uh, the Pac-Man. So the team here downstairs in the application team, they did quite some work on developing also stains. And one of the stains which was developed was a creme brulee stain. So if you have a creme brulee stain on your plate, it's baked on at 140 degrees Celsius, so that's a stubborn stain. But if you then wash that with your detergent, Without enzymes, yeah, you see some effect, but it's really bad. So it's not cleaned very well. So then we have the enzyme, which is active, but not fully active. And then you see something like this. It's clean, better, but it's not there. And then we have the engineered enzyme. Hey, voila, everything is clean. So the better we get designing specialized enzymes, the more we can reduce the use of other players in the games, like less eco-friendly uh, ingredients or the mechanical and thermal energy uh, that are needed. Wouldn't you like it that your dishes will be cleaned in five minutes in tepid water? I would. Okay, I went to work. I screened with the team upstairs for new enzymes because we always need new enzymes. Uh, by the way, you will get that tour eh, later on the lab. And finally, at the end of the day, I'm at home and I need to run a laundry. Uh, you remember that I left my shirt, it was spoiled with this chocolate spread and it needs to be cleaned. So at what temperature are you running your laundry? Is that 60 degrees Celsius, maybe even higher, or 40 or 30 degrees Celsius? An enzyme that performs well in warm water has a lower performance than in cold water. By engineering such an enzyme, the performance in cold water can then be the same as the warm water condition of the initial enzymes. By that, we enable all of us here to, to run your laundry at a lower temperature. I keep in mind that if you lower your temperature from 60 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius, you can save up to 60% of your energy cost. So, did you also know that enzymes can play a role, an important role, in the processing of textiles before they are made into clothing? These enzymes enable it so the cotton can be woven and knit properly, and that clothes feel clean and soft when we purchase them. Sorry. And we would like to keep it that way. But, for instance, if you wash a sweater a couple of times and only find a a giant cluster of pills, that's annoying. Pilling on your clothes occurs due to normal wear and tear. There's not much you can do about this. Buy a fabric shaver, or don't wear the sweater at all, or use enzymes. Yes, that acts like a fabric shaver, but not on a, uh, on a micro scale. Certain detergents do that, with added enzymes made to clip the little pills as you wash. So, as your clothes make it away from the closet to the washing machine, enzymes come into play. And the enzymes in detergents are multifunctional. Some are there for fabric care benefits, keeping your clothing looking newer longer, or for cleanliness and freshness, removing tough stains like Cheeto powder or chocolate. So hopefully, when you go home today, you see these everyday items in a different light. Whoa, so much science in that food you eat. Whoa, so much science in the tablet we use for the dish. Whoa, so much science in the pouch we use to do the laundry. Maybe we will get so good at it that we only need tiny bits of cold water to get your dishes or laundry clean. Or maybe we will prevent staling entirely and you can actually eat your never spoiling baguette. It was a busy day for me today. You know, going to work, having the dishes done, doing the laundry. So now it's time to relax and zipping a nice cold beer. <laughs> <laughs>